I'm binge watching the YouTube elders who have been my guides since I first searched, how do I know if I'm trans? They tell me there's no shame in postponing surgery. It's okay to not be ready. But I was ready. My mother was not. It's been four years since I first came out and I am not willing to wait another four so I can have her blessing. We may have shared a body for nine months, but the rest of my life is mine. I would rather die on a surgery table by my own choice than ever again pinned down like a caught butterfly. I lost myself and the devil's here. Trying to get out, jumping on my feet. My name is Lyra Smith and I use feminine pronouns. My name is Nina Carbone and my pronouns are they, them. My name is Alex and my pronouns are he, him. My name is Esteban Andres Cruz. Uh, my pronouns are they, them. Hey, my name is Clara. Um, I use she, her. I'm Chris Steele, also known as Polly Amber Ross, and I use they, them pronouns. My name is Jordan Palmer. My pronouns are they, them, theirs, and she, her, hers. I do both. My name is Kaz Volchev, and my pronouns are he, him. When I was in kindergarten, I remember, like, uh, being confused as to why I couldn't do certain things or why I had to line up with uh, all of these, like, boys, uh, because that's not who I was. You know, I was a child who experienced uh, gender dysphoria and dysmorphia. Uh, clinically, we can say at five years old. I wanted to be known as, as my brother's sister. I wanted to everybody to know that I was a girl and that this monstrosity between my legs was gone. It was part of my dysphoria. I have polycystic ovarian syndrome. Uh, like, basically, I had a very late period. Um, and, you know, like, I would look at all the other girls and I'd be like, why are their breasts bigger than mine? Like, what's going on? Um, and by the time I was 14, I already had facial hair and people were making fun of me for it. So sometimes I feel like I've had sort of a, like an intersex experience as well as a trans experience. Do we have to talk about the difference between sex and gender? Sex is your biology, you know, what, what, what junk you've got. Um, but then gender is this, is this internal sense of identity. It's who you it's who you know yourself to be. My gender's woman, non-binary. My sex, admittedly, if you really want to know what's in my pants. <gasps> perv. And when I became like I was like 12, I was like in sixth grade and I started to notice that like I had a lower status because of my the way I presented my gender. And so I was like, I went to Claire's and got like lip gloss and I bought a purse and I was trying on like, I was trying on a girl's jeans and like I had this fuzzy shirt and I was like really, really uncomfortable in it, but people started treating me a little bit better. And so it seemed like a fair trade off. Like I, I always knew like inside, like I'm a guy, I don't know what to do about that. I don't know if anybody could even understand what I'm talking about. Um, and then when I was 16, I found the word transgender and I was like, oh my God, like, that's it. That's me. You know, like at those Halloween stores, they sell like, um, they sell like fake nails. I remember buying those and like playing around with them. And I remember thinking, I really like this. You know, when my father found them, uh, he beat the shit out of me for that and like was like, oh, are you a boy or are you a girl? You better answer right. Sometimes with this sort of like cocoon that we've all been forced into with quarantines. Um, like I've had so much time to just like sit with myself and my gender and my body without any social expectations. And I've realized that I was always this trans and this queer and this non-binary and that it's society and social structures and religious structures that tried to convince me that I wasn't. I was flipping through the channels to catch all the games and he happened upon PBS and I said, Dad, go back, go back. And he went back and it was a production of Swan Lake. And I said, Dad, that's what I want to do. I want to do that.
my dad said, no, mijo, you can't do that. Ballet is for faggots. So it was forbidden for me to dance. So when we think about gender and the expression and something that comes from within, we also have to think about what are the, what are the parameters of restrictions that were enforced on us? I grew up actually believing everything that adults told me. Everything. Everything. So even if I was convicted of something deep in my body about like gender, to, for me, adults' voices were strong enough to overpower that. So I love my dad. He's helped me through a lot of really rough times. My mom was a different story. I, honestly, I don't really remember like the first time I came out to her. I just kind of remember like the conversations I had with her afterwards. Um, and I remember like, you know, she'd say things like, I like, I love you, but I don't like you. That saying things like she doesn't want to talk about me with her friends or with her mom. My mother had come up to my room while I was having a shower. She decides to clean in my room and she found the hormones. You know, she was like, oh, uh, there's only one reason why a man would need this. What are you trying to do? And then, you know, she kept, I was in the shower. I couldn't even run away. And she told my father who beat the shit out of me and then threw me out of the house again. I, I never intended to come out to them, but it happened. And you know, it is what it is. Like I remember wearing like a dark colored lipstick and feeling really judged walking down the street one day and like stopping and crying and like wiping it off. I walked around downtown Boston, just convinced that I was going to be assaulted. My mother actually tried to kill me when I was 16 and I was homeless until, uh, from then until this previous August. So like 19 years. When cis people just see it as like men in dresses or, you know, like women with dicks, that erases our entire ancestry of how hard we've worked to have the visibility that we have now. But we had these daughters of the revolution who led the revolt that were born male, expressed themselves as women, Sylvia and Martha, you know, they, they were our, our mothers. These are our laws. We are protected as transgender people by these laws they are trying to cut us out of, and they cannot make the laws go away. And NCTE and a lot of the other organizations represented here will fight in court, we will fight in administrative agencies, and hopefully soon <coughs> we will be able to fight in Congress. Trans adults um, are really facing like the real world consequences of the laws that negatively impact us. Um, like in 27 states, it's legal for your employer to fire you for being trans. So I was homeless for 20 years, uh, in large part because nobody would hire a transgender woman. They want to stop kids from getting hormone blockers, which have been used for decades to treat like precocious puberty and are reversible and safe. These people push it because it's part of their culture war that they're trying to wage. I mean, there's still the like very deep misunderstanding of how gender develops. You don't need to have gender dysphoria in order to be non-binary or trans. Gender dysphoria, of course, isn't, isn't a disease. It's a symptom of um, living in a world that has a disease. <laughs> Namely, the disease of believing that everyone is default cisgender. People need to realize that not only gender, but sex is not a binary. It's not in integrated into learning because we've sort of oppressed trans people specifically because trans people have always held a precious place in indigenous and communities of color. Dysphoria and all these, you know, things that were that are going on in our heads, that's all just totally treatable. You know, you can go on hormones, you can change your pronouns, you can do this or that thing, but if, if your loved ones don't accept you for who you are, that's, that's gonna really mess with your mental health. 
I mean, I, I work as a, as a crisis counselor for a suicide line and, um, and it's for LGBTQ teens um, and young adults. And like 90% of the time when somebody reaches out and they're like, I, 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 I'm thinking of just killing myself. When we explore like what's going on in their lives, it's like they're saying that, they're, that their parents are ashamed of them. Their, their family is disgusted by them, their friends. Their friends have abandoned them. I mean, those that's not low key. Like that has a really, especially for, for people who are so young. Remember I said that um, when I was little, the, the kid that I was, the kid in me, who I still am, defaults to um, believing everything an adult says. In, my, in the kid that I am, it creates some um, silence and concern and just knowing that like that there are parts like there are parts of my country that really don't want me to exist and would, would be okay if i were dead they, they you know that's not a concern to them i think it implicitly makes us feel worthless i think it implicitly makes us feel worthless and invalid it causes me to wonder if i really am wrong but i know i'm not And it's like, I don't... I feel like I just have, like, no stability anywhere. Emotionally. Like, relationship-wise. Like... <laughs> and... People always say, you know, oh, you're so brave to come out. You're so brave. And it's like, nah, fuck you. It was my only choice. Um, it's all I have. It's, it's who I am. And I have to be who I am because otherwise the option is death. We hope people can change and can grow and can open their mindsets and can become better people. Like, I have to carry that imagination and that hope in order to believe that we can keep impacting the world. Cis white men in this country do still have most of the institutional power so it's important that you know you use your platforms that you have to advocate on behalf of people who would not be listened to otherwise that's the other thing too it's just like people's attitudes people's attitudes about non-binary people trans people they're either really precious about it or um fearful about it or don't want to touch it with a 10-foot pole because they're afraid they're going to make a mistake. Pronouns are never the problem, but you conceiving of me as my identity, that's what's going to make the pronoun click. So if a trans person is telling you, hey, that's not my gender, do the damn work. Do the work in your brain. Reconceive that person. Find the things about them that connect to the thing they're telling you. Cement those things and let that become their truth. When you know you meet a trans person, please respect them. Even if they are a terrible person and they are awful to you, please at least use their correct pronouns because even if they are not a respectful person to you, they still deserve to be respected in their basic human rights. Don't let anyone misgender anyone even if they're not around. Always fix it. It's so easy to do, but interrupt the patterns of harm immediately. Listen to them, listen to what they need. Like, I don't speak for every trans person. You know, the community is not a monolith. The most important advice that I could give would actually be to the families of transgender people. And that would be to just love your family member regardless of who they are. Because love is what we need. And that's what most of us don't have. I want nothing else than to have my mother hug me one more time, but I've not seen her for 21 years since she tried to shoot me. And I still just want her to hug me one more time. Over there? But alone is alone not 
alive. Somebody crowd me with love. Somebody force me to care. Somebody let me come through. I'll always be there as frightened as you to help us survive. When you see a queer person, a trans person, a non-binary person living and living their full life and radiating light and love and joy, that is a that is like the bat signal for other queer and trans people to be like, oh my God, I can love myself. If you're questioning your gender identity, then try it. Try it. Figure out small ways that you can try things. Do things that are safe for you. Safety is important. I don't want you gone. Please don't let mean people keep you from exploring what makes you happy. But also just know that there's nothing wrong with you and, and everything you're feeling is within the realm of human experience because you're, an, you're a human experiencing it. Immediately as I woke up having my breast implants, I looked at my chest and I saw my chest. That was the first time that I ever felt happy to the point where the only thing I could do was cry. Are you videotaping me right now? Maybe. I'm so lucid. I'm not going to say anything goofy. Do what? I have a booby in my pocket? No. No, I don't. don't. It's so. a pocket. I don't have any boobies. I was, I was pretty amazed how quick things went. It took an hour and nine minutes. Sherlock isn't even an hour and nine minutes. I know. I don't even watch Sherlock because it's so long. I, it was the Very Hungry Caterpillar show, and I was the caterpillar and the butterfly, and I'm still the caterpillar. Well, now I'm the butterfly. Now you're the butterfly. Yeah. You don't understand the pain you don't. Trying to walk and talk every day. every day Cause of my skin color and gender they judge And it's just not strangers, it's also my blood my I'm blood. tired of feeling like I'm lower than everyone else so I just hope one day I can accept myself, myself. Embrace me for me